Hi everyone, it's MJ the Fellow Actuary and in this video I want to talk more about Super Rare and my art because February was a crazy month. We had $10,000 in total sales which brings collectively, I mean that doubled what my total sales were before February. So we're sitting at like $21,000 selling crypto art which the reason why it's crazy is because a lot of us study actuarial science because it's supposed to be where we make our money and yet it seems like yeah if you can get in on crypto art there is there's big money to be made both for creators and collectors in fact I actually want to yeah go through a little bit of my my pieces with you guys um, there's guys who've been buying it for like seven hundred dollars and then they sell it five hours later for like two thousand nine hundred dollars it is it is crazy um, my current pieces they they got bubbles I'm going through a little bit of a, a bubble phase where it's some scientific uh, things described with bubbles well little circles so you can see you can't you can't take too much of the science out of me even when it comes to art I'm still reflecting it, on it so we've got inflation big bang diffusion and black hole all scientific themes and the, the idea was to try and create or represent these things using only a geometric circle and you'll see your circles or something that pop up quite a bit in my pieces um, we've got the two ladies over here each of them have got a little pink circle uh, that they're holding both of them have sold so we got $349 and $354 so these two uh, have sold you can see with the the bubbles we do have a current offer of $382 hoping to get a thousand uh, but I'll take whatever the highest bid is at the end of the day tomorrow that didn't make sense in the next couple of hours I will take so if you want to come in and put like 0.26 then it'll probably go go to you um, this one sold for 0.24 this one's up for sale for 0.249 and this one some also put a bit of 0.2 so also probably sorry this is the one this is the one I'm gonna take the highest bit of in the next 24 hours this one I think can do a little bit better so it's really it's really cool how, how it yeah, inflates like that. Of course, got the crazy piece, Michael Jordan by Michael Jordan. Um, it's in a Pokemon card. It's minted like the day after the Pokemon 25th anniversary. It's it's crazy pop culture. It's my big, huge piece. Um, probably not going to sell it for a while, but I don't mind hanging on to it. Um, then I guess more serious art coming away from the Bubbles and Michael Jordan. We've got Fernand Ledger, which I think is going at a bit of a steal at 0 0.298, just $441. And this one as well, Inside the Mind, which is a nice animated one going for just $889. And I say that's relatively low because um, you can see for Picasso, we managed to sell that for $1,376. And then we had two more girls. I actually, I end up making quite a lot of art pieces about girls. Um, $387 for online girl and $362 for, for Caroline. Then this is the piece I was chatting about that we, oh yeah, we can even like click on it and go in and, and see how crazy the bids were. And this was, I mean, it was February, it was Valentine's Day, it was like, mm, I, I mean, it was weird, it was one of those pieces I didn't really like that much at first, but it got, went a little bit crazy with the bids, well, this guy buys it uh, for four, for $726 from me, which I was like, wow, that's incredible, and then sells it a little bit uh, later for $2,950. So, absolutely incredible, um, yeah, definitely my highest selling piece is at... I mean that's close to three thousand dollars, which is is ridiculous. I mean, as an actor, you'd have to work for a few hours before you can get get that kind of money. Um, then you'll see got quite a lot of fluffy, cute animals. We've got Meow Zinger, three hundred eighty nine dollars. Interesting thing about this piece is there were quite a lot of bids on it afterwards, and yeah, we saw this person made a bid as well as this guy making a bid. And the collector is like hasn't even got a list price. I think they they just love this piece, which is always great to see as as the artist is that people aren't just flipping your pieces to make a higher profit. They are holding on to it because they enjoy it. Um, Black Knight, this one was wow. It was really cool. It was my highest selling um, that I made all on my own, and that was one thousand one hundred seventy three dollars. 
and you can see the person also hasn't put up a, a list price because they want to they want to hold on to that one. This one um, I did do as a collaboration with a friend and well, what we did as a collaboration for a friend was basically they showed me a whole bunch of their art pieces and this one just stood out to me and I was like, this one needs to go on super rare. And we put it up for 0 0.825 and it sold so quickly. Um, yeah, it was crazy how, how quickly this piece sold. Then we have Nightmare, uh, sold for just $362. We had Pum God on a Rock for $424. Pum God on a Pillar for $462. The Hex Cycle. I was actually hoping that this one would sell for a little bit more. Because um, you yeah, got a bit of a unique, interesting design. $487. Blast Toys only coming in with $279. Then we had Octopus going for $340. We had the Stormy Skull for $389. Uh, Nina just sold for $260. So that's quite a nice little bargain. And this was what I called the Rejected Collection. So it was all these pieces that I didn't want to make as their own token. I thought, let's just join them all together. Put it for quite a low price and it sold like quite quickly. So very impressed with that. Um, this one was $214. This was also uh, some like what one of my friends made it and I was just like, this piece needs to be on Super Rare. And it's, it's, it's always a little bit awkward when I put my friends' art pieces on my platform and they sell for a lot more than, than my ones. I mean, I was getting $214, my friend's piece was getting $1,563. Um, but the way we did the collaboration was that we would go 50-50 on whatever the sales price was. So making a little bit more money on other people's art than my own, which is which is weird. Um, this one, did I only sell for $192? This one could have gone for a little bit more. This one was, yeah, this was a great sale, $641. Um, and, oh, I think this was a resale, I think, I don't think I got sold got six hundred and forty one dollars for this one. Let's just double check. Um, yes, oh, they sold it. They bought it for me for one hundred eighty five dollars. Sold it for six hundred and forty one dollars within the course of two weeks. I remember the person who bought this. They actually made it their profile picture. So I was like, yeah, they're really into this. Although I guess if you buy something for one hundred eighty four dollars, eighty five dollars, and somebody offers you what's that, close to three times the amount in 15 days. I mean, that's that's quite a good return, quite a good return. It's too cool, uh, spinning girl with sunglasses. And yeah, she has made, um, yeah, the, the, the first time buyer a lot more than me. And we sometimes see that. I mean, like if you see with the Furbies, we sold for $182, $192, $202. Same with the High Furby, also sold for that. And then the person was able to get in a resale of $780. And you can see the other Furbies, they haven't listed prices. They think these things are going to pump and climb a lot higher. So relatively speaking, I kind of undersold the Furbies. And you can see, if you want to get if you want to get a high Furby now, you need $62,000 for high Furby. Um, then we've got Mickey that was based on, I've got his actual artist that I was looking in. It was, it was on like a swatch watch and I was just like, this is so cool. So what I wanted to do was bubble it up. You can see I really enjoy circles and this guy was like making these circles. So you got Damien Hurst, Mickey Mouse. Um, I wanted to just animate it, play around with it, have a lot more fun with it. And beautiful, beautiful piece. Let me close some of these tabs. Um, Windows, Windows sold for $140. Pink Flower sold for only $193. Person's hoping to get $7,634. I think if they came in and they wanted just like say two ETH, if they just wanted $3,000, this piece might, might sell. Five, 5.5, 5 5.15 ETH is, is a lot, but it's not nearly as much as this person wants. 1,545 ETH, that is 2.2 .2 million dollars I sold it for 218 dollars and they now want um, yeah two point almost 2.3 million dollars I mean if you look closely at this piece you'll see there's the snake eating its own tail the Ouroboros which is also what we have with the the symbol here why does it say no I think that's just a little glitch on on rareable um, remember on rareable I have a whole bunch of my my little actuarial tokens. Um, 
Not many people know this, but you can combine them and they start forming a puzzle and then you need to figure out the number sequence and it reveals a code. Well, you can see they've got this bright color because there's secrets that are revealed only after you buy it, you solve the puzzles and it can unlock a cool crypto wallet worth a lot of ETH. So we've been selling a few, like we sold two Benjamin Franklins, we sold one William Talbot, one Thomas Baines, um, one William Morgan. So we've been selling a few to Edmund Haley's, um, but I think these things are going at an absolute bargain at the moment. And yeah, um, I mean, if you look at the price of my other non-fungible tokens, I mean, this is just a couple of dollars. So definitely a nice way to get into non-fungible tokens is to play around with these. And then of course, once you've got the secret, you can sell it on. And also don't feel bad about buying like 50, especially with the gas prices being quite high, you might want to buy a chunk of them and then slowly sell them off and make a little bit of profit. Of course, there's a big risk with all cryptocurrency stuff, but this is your, you've seen my other the YouTube videos on actuarial history, I'm gonna be building this thing up and I think the cards that I release going forward, well, you can already see the prices are starting to, to climb up. So worth getting into it nice and early. Anyway, let's go back to Super Rare. Um, Gabby, that's actually not such a bad resale price that might actually sell quite soon. Um, then we've got the McGregor map, sold for 262. Then I sold a couple, this is this is before February. So I think February started, I remember making the, the Furbies in January. So yeah, that's when the prices started getting insane. These prices were a lot more reasonable. I mean, $74, this person could flip this for a lot more. Um, we sold Julius Malema for $296. Um, this one we sold for $101. This one, oh my gosh, there was there were some big bids and they didn't want to accept it. So, because as, as the artist, you do get a royalty. So every time someone resells the piece, you do get a little bit more of it. And yeah, you can just check here. So I sell it for $114 at 0.25 ETH. Then this person really wanted it. They bid 0 0.315, 0 0.385, 0 0.425, and this person was like, you know what, I'm not selling it until I get 4.12 ETH. And 4.12 ETH is $6,000 uh, if you wanna get, get that piece over there. Um, then we had some cool funky pieces, Bubblegum, that's quite a nice one, Obscure Pink, uh, The Giraffe, uh, we've got Smudge, which is a little profile picture, uh, sold for 265. We've got Murakami, 475, Caponius. You can see, I, there's still a lot of science in the art. I'm, I'm still, uh, it's weird because people normally put science and, and art as two different ends of the spectrum. And of course, when you study actuarial science and specifically the statistics and the model building and all of that kind of stuff, um, you kind of categorize as a scientist. But yeah, this is showing that actuaries, we can have, we can have fun with art too. And here we can see we got circles and cats. This llama, I think this is my highest ether sale is this llama. So this was a little bit while back when the Ethereum prices were a little bit lower. Um, oh, this llama, I was a little bit worried about it because there's like a whole Instagram account for this fluffy llama that I carry around. And I was like, is this too childish? And no, we actually sold it for $536, which was huge at the time. Um, then, this piece over here, Wisdom Machine, there is like a whole encrypted code inside of it for somebody to decipher and it leads to an online thing. Um, so selling it for 303 is probably too low. I see the person isn't interested in reselling it. They wanna keep it for themselves. We've got the Wisdom Journey. So we had Wisdom Machine, Wisdom Journey, $192. Mayhem going for 506, which I think at the time was the highest. So these were my early pieces that weren't fetching that much. Um, and you can kind of see, like this one, if you're a collector, this is quite a nice piece to maybe get at just $1,451. Um, there's another cat. This one, what I like about Green Girl especially is the fact that, one. well here, yeah, you can see it, Coldy. So one of the biggest artists on the platform like got this piece. You can see he's got 538. And if we had to go, I think we did click on it. Um, now we've gone to the art piece, whoops. If we go to Coldy, you'll just see, like I'm still a baby artist. I am very much a baby artist on this platform. 
if we come and look at Coldy, uh, and I mean he's not even number one. I think he's definitely top top ten. Um, let's just wait for his his pieces and you can see last sale $18,000, $26,000, $30,000, dollars So that's why it was really cool to have one of the big artists buy the piece and I mean I was actually on Twitter um, talking about that piece and he was saying you know he loves it, he thinks it's such a great one. That's also the thing, I'm big on like I only use Twitter for crypto art so if you want to come and check me out on uh, on Twitter it's uh what's it bayman1991 because i've had this account yeah for a long time before i was doing crypto stuff so come check it out if you want to follow me for just nft stuff and also i give giveaways for so we've just given away um our little crypto thing isaac newton 31 minutes ago so i think the guy has commented and i'm going to send that nft to him that as well and then yeah i just kind of show other pieces that I like and a whole bunch of, of fun things. Also make videos on the art pieces that you guys can watch and, and interact with. So yeah, so that's kind of, yeah, it was quite cool how my, at the time, my latest piece and my poke, my first piece were both based on, on Pokemon stuff. Anyway, I don't want this video to be too long, so let's maybe wrap up. Um, Vitalik Buterin, the reason why it's kind of like this is when I met him, he was wearing a pink shirt with a unicorn on it and for those of you who don't know Vitalik uh, Buterin he's the kind of guy who made Ethereum and made this whole craziness possible so a little bit of a tribute to him um, this piece recently resold for 775 I think I sold it for like $89 this was back when I was selling pieces for like under $100 um, I should go back and buy these pieces but they are putting them at ridiculous prices I, should, I want to go back and buy them and then resell them because I think they would fetch a lot higher now. So these are really nice and, and collectible um, if you are interested in the whole NFT game. This piece has also resold quite a few times. Um, I sold it for a lot less than that and I see it's now up at $11,000, which is huge, absolutely huge, it's crazy. So that's kind of my, my art pieces, like I say, um, Gosh, if we just swipe through all of them, they are quite quite expensive. So, like I say, on Rareable, I have more entry level pieces, the non fungible tokens, as well as a few other ones. So, come check me out on um, Rareable. I'll put some links in the description below. Otherwise, yeah, follow me on Twitter if if you're interested in learning more about non fungible tokens and crypto art. So, that was primarily what i was doing in february was making was making art however it's coming now to march and we're going to get back into actuarial work i've got nine weeks of well nine week course on financial engineering seven week course on financial mathematics a nine week course on pure mathematics and a five week course on enterprise risk management so march and april definitely going to be a lot more uh, traditional work and then um yeah we might see it just a few art pieces here and there if I get time to, to have a little bit of a break. But as always, thanks so much for watching and let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Keep well, everyone. Cheers.